Welcome to another episode coming at you from ChooseYourRelationships.com, offer of Love Can't Wait, which can be found on Amazon.com. I have a special guest for you today. She's She has an almost supernatural ability to understand and hack the mechanics behind people's subconscious mind and create new and better strategies, strategies in life. He's a multi-award winning coach active for over 25 active in 25 countries and one of Europe's sharpest in her field. She's helped thousands of people to maximize their potential and is often seen as the coach's coach. And she also helps people understand that there's nothing wrong with them. It's just their programming and that that's what's wrong and this is something you can change. Our special guest today is Karen Tide and welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, so thanks again for taking time to do this. Uh, so, so where are you from originally? Uh, originally, I'm from Sweden. So I live in the southern parts and uh, I've been here my whole life. Oh, that's, that's cool. So, yeah. so how did you uh, come along this path? Because, you know, most, everyone has a different story and... Uh, most of the time, you know, people, the path that they're on, they didn't, you know, grow up and say, hey, I want to I want to help people do this. I want to help people do that. So how, how did you get started? Well, uh, it's a it's a long story, so I will just give you some snippets of it. So I was born and raised in a very religious family. Mm. It was also a very dysfunctional family. Uh, so both religious and uh, dysfunctional wasn't a good combination for me. Um, so I grew up with a, a lot of, you know, rules I have to follow and also a lot of punish if I didn't do it right. And I had to be perfect in God's eyes. Mm-hmm. And um, so that mm-hmm. gave me a lot of trauma and a lot of scars. So. I didn't know about that. So when I was 18 years old, the same day, actually, I become 18, I left my family. Mm -hmm. And I walked into the world and my family said to me, well, if you want to live your own life, uh, you are not our child anymore. So they kind of break everything off and I have to find my own way in the outer, you know, uh, just a new game plane, uh, something totally different outside from what I've learned as a child. So I was very, very busy for a long time to figure out how to play the game in the outer world and to become um, a good citizen and to... I worked a lot. I made a career and everything. And um, I think I I didn't think about my past. I didn't know that I had any problems at the moment. But then when I was 35 years old, I became depressed. Mm. And I didn't understand uh, then. It took me a while to understand that the depression come from everything that had happened as a young girl and I never had a therapy for it. I never talked about it. I didn't see search for coaching or anything. So I tried to to figure out what to do. Um, I couldn't do it. So I actually started to go in therapy and that was the beginning. Uh, I still didn't want to coach people. I remember after a while I went to, to therapy for many years. And people said to me, well, you have done so much therapy. You are so good at it. So why don't you become a therapist? Mm. And I remember saying that, no, 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 no. I don't want to talk about people's problem, (laughs) you know, all day long. (laughs) I can't do it. So, but then after a while, I noticed that I started to help friends. Mm. They spoke to me when they had problems. And slowly, slowly, I found it very rewarding to see people grow and be able to help people. And then eventually, about 12 or 13 years ago, I decided, oh, maybe I should do this professionally because I really like helping people. 
Um, but it took me a while to get there to really enjoy helping and not just seeing it as, oh, a lot of people coming to me with their problems. Uh, yeah. But instead of see the bright side of it, see all the changes, all the growing and the satisfaction of being a part of their journey. So that's how I become a coach for, yeah, about 12, 12 years ago. Mm, that's a great story, you know? Yeah. Thank you. So what, what made... Tough one though. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, I don't know why it's usually like that for most people. Most people, they usually have to go through something. Uh, and they'll end up in a completely different place. And I don't, I haven't met a lot of people that it was smooth sailing and hey, you know, I picked this path and that was it. <laughs> it usually doesn't happen that way. Mm, true. I think that it's a really good thing to, if you are a coach, it's a really good thing that you have gone through stuff yourself. Yeah. Because it's easier for you to understand the client yeah. and if you have done it yourself you know go gone through the fire um i often notice that my clients feel very safe with me because i can take their hands and i can say come on <laughs> i'm gonna go together with you through the fire because i've done it and i know we can do it together and i i know how to get out on the other side yeah. So I think that all these lessons I've learned, all the challenges I have met my whole life has trained me to take my client's hand and to help them go, walk through the fire, yeah. basically. Yeah. yeah. So what made you focus on the, the, on the subconscious mind? And the reason why I asked that, because, uh, you know, I focus on dating and relationships between yep. men and women and a lot of guys face a lot of rejection and yeah. through those trials and tribulations a lot of guys have given up because of the rejection they, they look at the rejection like it's a physical thing and they pretty much said hey you know what it doesn't matter it's just not going to work for me you know and they throw in the towel <laughs> so what made you yeah. focus on the subconscious mind well because it's in the subconscious mind where you have all this programming that either help you or stop you. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of the database or the library where everything resides. And I just want to address shortly about when you're talking about men giving up when they have been rejected for a long time or many, many times. Mm -hmm. You know, actually, when you get rejected, it's the same area in the brain that lit up as physical pain. Mm. So rejection is extremely painful. It feels you can feel the same pain as if you were break a leg or, or, you know, get injured in some way. So the same area in the brain that lits up when you are in physical pain lits up when you get rejected. Mm. So that's why if you have been rejected several times, you have felt so much pain that you, of course, will maybe stop yourself and say, I don't want to do this anymore. And what happens is that the subconscious mind, like I said before, it's the, it's the library, library where you store everything. So the subconscious mind stores the pain and stores the rejection and kind of try to help you so every time you move towards a woman or a partner or if you move towards something that you have you know bad experience around before the subconscious would say no 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 <laughs> we're not gonna do that because that will hurt you so the subconscious is very clever so then it can start to create symptoms for you like you start to sweat or you start to get red in the face or it itches somewhere just to get you get you away from the situation or the woman <laughs> yeah so that's one way or the subconscious can stop you in another way like sending you a lot of doubts 
saying this not this is not going to work. Uh, she's going to reject me again. I don't want to feel this pain. Or the subconscious can send you a lot of uncomfortable feelings, you know, being scared or feeling very low or afraid or something. So the subconscious kind of just try to make you survive and to feel safe and be happy. So the subconscious is not calculating about what happens next. Because if you don't pursue, pursue a woman as a man, if you don't seek out a partner, you will be alone. Yeah. And you will probably unhappy, right? Yeah. But the subconscious doesn't think about future problems. That if you don't get into a relationship, you will be lonely and you will be depressed or sad. The subconscious is just thinking about right here and now. And if there is a potential threat or pain coming your way, the subconscious will say, no, we're not going to do this. We're going to block you in any way we can. So that's why I noticed that in order for me to help, for instance, men, if they have been rejected a lot and to build up their strength again and to feel secure enough to try, even if they get rejected, you have to kind of negotiate with the subconscious mind and teach the subconscious mind how to react instead and hopefully heal and make the person so strong that they can take the rejection because you're going to get rejected once in a while. Yeah. So it sounds like the subconscious mind is a gift and a curse. <laughs> yeah, it could be. Absolutely. But you know, the subconscious mind is also, it's, it's about practicality. Yeah. So the subconscious, I used to say it has two jobs. And the first job is to make you survive and protect you from pain and danger. But the other one, the other job it has is to save energy. Mm. And that means that if you were supposed to get up every morning and not know, knowing how to put on your the coffee maker, so that every day you have to start again, or if you open the door, where is the handle? How do you open the door? Or how do I drive to work? How does the car, how do I drive the car? So the subconscious stores everything that we learn and make it automatic because that makes it faster. And that, you know, when you wake up in the morning, you don't have to figure out how the coffee, how, how the coffee maker works. You just know it because you stored yeah. it. And when you go to work, you're driving the car, you know how to drive the car because you've done it so many times. You don't forget it till the next day. So a lot of these things are automated to make, you know, not our head to explode yeah. and make the day efficient. The problem is that the subconscious mind also automating thoughts and emotions. Mm -hmm. So if you tell yourself like, I'm not a good person, I will be rejected, I can't do this, anything negative about yourself, and you say that a couple of times, it will be stored in the subconscious mind and the subconscious mind will repeat it, you know, like that an autopilot over and over and over again. So it uses, <laughs> uh, I've seen some statistic that the subconscious mind is using about 90% of the same thoughts that it used yesterday. Yeah. So it's also an autopilot. So some autopilot is good because it makes our day flow, right? Right. But some programming and some automatic things are not good for us if they're negative. Right. Then it, it, yeah, you know, like I said, if you say to yourself, I'm not a good person and you repeat that, the subconscious mind will repeat it forever and ever. And it will kind of break you down slowly. Yeah. So yeah. We, have, we have to be co consciously aware of what we put into our minds, what we see, what we hear and yeah. almost everything, especially in yeah. this is where we live. Because um, majority of the time, the stuff we see and hear, the television, the radio, the video, doesn't really, 
doesn't really help us. It might entertain us. Yeah. It doesn't really help us. Yeah. You know, I, I always use um uh I like to use football as like yeah. a kind of analogy because you know, like like when uh when a team gets like a new coach, you know, the new coach mm -hmm. comes in with his own way of doing things, own offense, yeah. own defense, yeah. whatever. And during practice, they run the same plays over and over and over again. So it's repetition. Yeah. They keep doing it over and over because the coaches realize that if you have new players, they haven't yeah. bought in to the yeah. system. So I took, I always use that same analogy and I apply it to anything, relationships, or even doing this. You keep yeah. doing it over and over. And you're not going to be where you want to be in the beginning when you first get started but if you keep going you eventually get better and you eventually have a breakthrough yeah yeah and i think it's really important then to have support because yeah. sometimes you do it all by yourself and when you get rejected or you you don't feel like good enough uh, sometimes you need a good wingman <laughs> or yeah. support to just help you and to you know kick your kick your butt a little bit yeah yeah, yeah. but a majority of the times yeah, you probably you probably be by yourself <laughs> yeah yeah but eventually if you keep going people will show up that's yeah. my experience yeah yeah so how does hypnosis well first off what is hypnosis and then and how do you use it to help your clients yeah, so hypnosis is just a state of mind where you are very focused on your inner world. So it's kind of a trance where your brain waves slow down. And when your brain waves slow down, you, uh, your, your brain gets smarter. It can find better solution. It can relearn faster. So hypnosis is actually a key to a door. When you open it, it's easier for the brain to think differently, see new perspectives, see new opportunities, relearn, um, heal, and sometimes even forgive all things. So in that state, the mind is very creative. So that's why I work it. And it's a little bit, it, it feels like being in a meditation. It's the same thing. And I use it to kind of deep dive into my client's subconscious to, you know, get the real answers why the problem is there. Because often a person come to me and they say, I have this problem and I've tried to solve it, but I don't know how. And I may be gone in some therapy, but it, well, we talked about the problem. I know more about the problem, but the problem is still there. Then I know that it's probably some kind of program running in the subconscious mind that is making the person, you know, react or act in a way that's not desirable for them. So with hypnosis, we can kind of open the door to this library. So I can ask them deeper questions. We can go deeper and really, really see what the root to the problem is. And when we find the root there, we can start to look around 360 degrees and see, can we look at this problem in a different way? And if we look at the problem in a different way, what happens to you then? Could you change how you think about it? Could you change how you think about yourself? Um, could you change how you react or who, uh, when you act? Could you change that in a more positive way? So hypnosis is really just kind of firing up the brain to be smarter and more uh, solution oriented. Well, you kind of like, kind of uh, help people see, see things different, kind of rewire their brain. Yeah. yeah. I can give you an example if you want to. Yeah, sure. sure. Yeah. Okay. So, um, a while back I had a woman and she came to me and say that she was an entrepreneur. She just started and she was networking. And she said, I have a problem because when I go to these network meetings, 
I don't dare to go up to the people I want to talk to and, and present myself and my business. So mm -hmm. I'm standing there, I look at the person and then I say, no, not today. And if I do this, I, I won't have a business in about one year. I will know I we don't have a business anymore. So I said to her, okay, so you're stopping yourself. Have you tried to, you move forward anyway? And she said, yeah, but I freeze. I can't do it. So what I did is that we worked in hypnosis. And what we find was that when she was very little, like maybe two, three years old, she was playing with her toys. And at one point she was a little bit bored. So she started to to walk out in the kitchen and mm -hmm. she found a chair. She was going onto the chair up on the table and then she saw, saw the sun through the window. And she was really amazed by it. So she was standing there with a little nose and hands on the glass, looking at the sun and her ma mother came in and you know, her mother was really scared. She saw her little toddler standing there on the table. So she was like, no, 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 no. And you know, she took her down on the floor again. So I asked my client, okay, um, is this common that your mother often when you explore and when you are uh, curious and you do stuff, is it common that your mother says, no, 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 no. And she says, yeah, actually she did that all the time. Like, no, 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 don't do that. Be careful. And so I said, okay, so if we fast forward a couple of years when you are five, six, and I want you to notice yourself, what kind of strategy has this cause to emerge and she said oh i noticed that before i do something as a child before i explore before i'm curious i always look at my mother for approval before i do something and i said okay so what if we fast forward to until today and you're standing there in the networking meeting and are you waiting for someone to say, yes, it's okay for you to move forward and talk to that person? And she said, oh, damn, you're right. I'm yeah. still waiting for my mother or someone, some authority saying me, yeah, you can go. It's okay. So I said, but do you need that approval? No, I really don't. <laughs> so I said, okay, so now we're going to teach your subconscious mind that you are the boss. You are not five years old anymore. You're a grown woman and you can say, I want to approach this person because I want to talk to them and I'm curious about them and maybe I can help them with something. And then I used, you know, Mel Robbins. She's a great um, speaker and coach. Oh, and yeah. I used, uh, I used her rule five, four, three, two, one. So I'd say to her that when you're standing there in the room networking, you see that person you want to talk to. And you know that now you are the boss, you are not five years old anymore. And you just count five, four, three, two, one, and you start to move. And she did it. And that combination of solving that her subconscious thought that she still had to ask for permission to do something in combination with a practical tool, five, four, three, two, one, she overcame her fear and it went very well. Yeah, I mean, I can relate to that story. Whoo! Yeah. yeah you know, I, my, so, do you my, need approval too? <laughs> I did at one point. My mom. Um, I realized that my, when I was growing up, my mom used to always say, "Hey, stop, don't say that. So stop doing that." And I grew up, and I was just thinking that I was always waiting around for approval or. For yeah. somebody to tell me to do something. And and I realized that I missed a lot of opportunities doing that. Yeah. And so I was about maybe 25. And I and I just stopped waiting on people to do stuff. I just yeah. just did it. And I realized yeah. that um yeah, I used to be in network marketing too. So I that's I can really relate to what she was saying yeah. as far as approaching people. Yeah. I realized that if I was in motion, if, if, I, if I'm on the way walking towards somebody, yeah. if I stop, that's it. <laughs> yeah. So you I just have to move. It. Maybe it's the same for men if they're approaching a woman. If they stop, it's over. <laughs> yeah. You if just you have stop, to keep moving. Yeah. Yeah. If you stay in motion, 
Yeah, stay in motion. That's a really good advice. Stay in motion. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm just gonna. You have to make a cut because normally uh, my computer is fully charged, but at this moment I don't know what happened. I forgot, so I just have to plug it in. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, just give me a minute. Okay. This episode is brought to you by Manscaped.com, the global brand for men's grooming and hygiene products. Manscaped just hooked me up with a bunch of stuff. The perfect package 4.0. It's a trimmer. It's waterproof. You get 90 minutes once you put it on the charger. Turn it on. Plus, you get free boxer, free bag. And you get the t-shirt that I got on right now. Plus, you get the liquids to keep you fresh to death. All you got to do is go to manscaped.com. Use the promo code can't wait 20 You get 20% off plus free shipping plus two free gifts at manscaped.com. Plus, you get a newspaper. We say balls. So all you got to do to get 20% off is go to manscaped.com plus free shipping plus two free gifts and use the promo ca- promo code can't wait 20. Okay. <laughs> okay, so how how did the um the book come about what made you want to write a book um well it it's quite simple um it was just that um when i spoke to people i held seminars Mm. Uh, a lot of people said oh don't you have a book that we can read a little bit more about it so and i said no because frankly (laughs) i don't like writing books it's it's not (laughs) my (laughs) <laughs> no, some people are really good at it. Uh, I'm good at writing small snippets of wisdom. That's it. Okay. But um, at one point I said to myself, okay, I'm going to do it because it can help more people to get yeah. them to understand that there's nothing wrong with them because so many people think that there are, it's something is wrong with them. They're oh, not good yeah. enough or they're not strong mm-hmm. enough or they're not smart enough or they're not attractive enough. But oh. everything that is, it's a programming. So it's just, there's nothing wrong with them. It's just the program that is wrong. And that's a good thing because that's a program a, you can change. Man, that's a big problem right there. That's, that's probably yeah. the biggest thing people deal with. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. So I decided to just write a book to be able to, to reach more people. And also a lot of people who maybe cannot afford to go to a coach or in therapy because it's too expensive Uh, so they can still have a book where they can learn how the subconscious work Mm -hmm. and they can a lot i got a lot of emails people telling me like oh i totally Mm -hmm. understand that oh that was a really good explanation you wrote on page this and that because it made me understand that i suffered from this my whole life so now i get it and also the book has a lot of small easy mind hacks that you can do to move forward in life. Yeah, how'd you come up with the title? I like the title, Mind Hacking for Rebels. I, I like that. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> well, uh, I've always been a rebel myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I rebelled against my parents and my religion and society and everything. So I am I am a rebel myself. And to, to become a very, um, mature human being to be happy or to be peaceful and everything. You have to be a rebel because you have to break a lot of old programming and a lot of things that people told you when you were young, that this is how you should think. This is how you should feel. This is how you should do. You shouldn't do this and that. So you have to be a little bit of a rebel daring to go outside the comfort zone and daring to break some rules, right? Yeah. Um, and mind hacking is just that it's uh, 
right now the word hacking is extremely popular. Yeah. Um, so we have life hacking, biohacking, yeah. brain hacking, and everything. So hacking is really about. I think it was MIT that came up with the word hacking. Uh, I think it was. I think so. Yeah, and I think it was in the mid fifties. Yeah. And hacking meant like a finding a, a simple solution to a complex problem. Yeah. So it's kind of finding the the best, not always the easiest, but you know the best way to reach something that you want, a goal or anything else. So um, so hacking is a way of going outside the comfort zone, maybe don't rely on scientific material all the time, but find your own way. What is the fastest and the best way for me to optimize something? And for biohacker, it's often to optimize their body in some way, to find the most effective way to, to kind of enhance the body's capacity in some way. So with mind hacking, it's the same what I do. So I help people to optimize their brain and to kind of find the fastest way to move forward and to become the person they want to be. Yeah. I I don't work accordingly to a specific um, uh, template or something. Mm. Uh, so I more kind of work intuitively and see what does this specific person need. Yeah. 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 So how, how long did it take you to write the book? Oh my God. <laughs> 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 well, uh, it's a funny story because I started to write the book several times okay. and I wrote like half a chapter and I put it away yeah. and I did that for maybe at least three, four years. Yeah. I just wrote uh, a couple of pages and, you know, yeah. Yeah. left it there. So at one point, two years ago, I decided uh, that is now or never. Yeah. So either I do it or I don't. <laughs> yeah. Because if I'm doing it in this pace, it will never be finished. So. I realized that uh, I have to decide a, a very firm deadline. And I also actually uh, contacted a writing coach okay. to help me. Like I said before, sometimes we need support. Yeah. So I needed the support. I needed someone to be accountable for. I needed someone to, I've, I've told her my deadlines. I told her how many words I was supposed to write every day and everything. And that was the magic bullet for me because I didn't want to call her and say, I, d I haven't done my homework. <laughs> I haven't been writing or um, I have been doing something else. I wanted to honor the agreement that she and I had. So yeah. when I started to write it, it took a year to write it okay. with all the, you know, changes and yeah. Yeah. training and things like that yeah it's a lot of work man i i never wanted to um i never wanted to write a book it, it's a lot of work yeah I was like uh yeah i've done it three times I, I i don't see myself doing it again it's a lot of work i you know i think you have to be in a different mindset like to to sit down and just type or write or however you choose to do it it's a lot of work <laughs> It yeah. is, but I, I also think that uh, that we are very different. Uh, some people love to write, even though yeah. it's a hard work. Yeah. Uh, I'm more, I like to, to talk. Me too. Uh, so I think that if I could just talk, I would easily produce a book. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, to write, uh, it's a slower process for my, me. And um, well... I, it's not for me really, but I did it. I'm very, very glad that I did because a lot of people uh, have bought the book in Sweden and now it's in the States and people are telling me that it has helped them. So I can feel very grateful and yeah. very satisfied that I did it. And it was also very good to overcome a hurdle myself. Yeah. 
to yeah. see that I can do it. And, and even if I, I needed to ask for some, some support, I could still do it. So sometimes, you know, we have to challenge ourselves, even if we are coaches. Yeah. When we challenge ourselves, we grow. You know? Yeah, we do. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I, I'm going to get your book, and I highly recommend everybody that watches this episode to get the book. So if they wanted to go get the book uh, and work with you directly or indirectly, where, where would yeah. they go? So the easiest way is to just go to Amazon or Barnes & Noble. You can buy it as an ebook or as a printed version on the major big uh, platforms, but Amazon is the biggest one. Uh, Barnes and Noble, um, what's more indie, indie books. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's everywhere. Uh, and actually, um, two days ago, it, my book actually won the 2022 independent press award as oh, well. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't, um, expect that. So it was uh, quite overwhelming and I was very happy and, and hope that helps the book to to find more readers. Yeah, exactly. You know, sometimes you just, you just put your efforts out there. You put the energy out there. Yeah, and things happen, and, and you might surprise yourself. You just never know. <laughs> you never know. True, true. <laughs> so there you have it. Like, share this episode. All links will be found in the show notes. And tell. Next time, we out. Peace.